everybody welcome to grace and fire my name is glenda so i want to be an inspiration to those who are new canners and getting into this for the first time i want you to know that you don't have to have a canning book to can you really don't um for the recipes i'm referring to Online, you can go to the major canning companies or you can go to pectin companies and download the recipes and follow it to a T with no problem. You can also go to the store and purchase things like these that actually have the recipe on the back of it. And I'm going to show you. It has the recipe and you can follow this to a T. Um, quite frankly, I like to buy these just because the ingredients are already pre-measured and when it comes time for canning, it just makes things a little bit easier. And sure, I have a lot of the canning books and I love my canning books, but sometimes I want you to know it's okay to use these packets. So the other thing is, is like one of the beauties of this particular one for salsa it says I can either use fresh tomatoes or I can use canned tomatoes. Um, right here on the very first sentence, it says six pounds of tomatoes or six cans. And it is not that size. It's not this, it's the smaller one. I just don't have the smaller size. But, um, but yeah, I just want you to know that it's okay, you know, to get into this as long as you're canning you're putting food up for your family that you made, hey, you know, that's what matters the most. And you're following the recipe to a tea. That's important because we don't want anybody getting sick. So anyhow, I'm going to show you just an example of how I make salsa for my family. Um, not only do I eat it like salsa, um, like when after it's prepared and I've opened the can and I've put it in the fridge, Sometimes I'll have it like on your chips or on your tacos or whatever. I'll, that's what I'll put it on. But sometimes I use it in a crock pot recipe with chicken and cream cheese, bell peppers and onions and let it sit all day and marinate. And then either I'll serve it over rice or we'll put it on tortillas. Oh my gosh, the sky's the limit with making homemade salsa. So anyhow, if this is something that interests you, Come along and join me as I uh, make some salsa. I just picked a bunch of these tomatoes, so I need to process them. So here we go. All right, so as you can see, I have all of the tomatoes washed and cut. But before I do, I wanna show you. So I just cut the core out. You can use a tomato uh, core um, if you've got one. I don't, so I just use a knife. And then you wanna put an X let me make it right here, just, just gently. See how I've got an X right there? So you wanna do that because that helps um, you whenever you're processing your tomatoes, the skins will fall off. So again, I'm just gonna do it again. I'm just, you just barely go in and make an X. See, there you go. And the cores are out. So the next process is that I have a um, pan of hot water over here. I have some ice water. Let's see, I'll go this way. I have some ice water. And then I have the bowl that I'm gonna put the tomatoes in as I peel them. I'm gonna get one more, um, maybe like a plate out so I can put all the skins on. Now I'm gonna hold on to the skins. You're not gonna see this process, but I'm just gonna tell you what I'm gonna do with it. So I am actually going to dehydrate them in a dehydrator, and then I'm gonna put them into a mason jar just like this. This is actually um, tomato skins. And whenever my recipes call for a thickener, this is actually what I use instead of using tomato paste. So um, I won't be showing that today, but I will be making some more tomato powder. And uh, in my dehydrator, it's actually quite simple. Just put it on your dehydrator and then let it sit. And then whenever it's completely dry, you put it in a food processor and you blend it up. It's really, really good. Or if you have a freeze dryer, you can use that as well. 
All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'll put the camera up so that way you can see um, a little bit closer as to this process of processing tomatoes. It's actually quite simple. I wanna demystify that. Um, I don't want anybody being afraid of this. And actually, you know, processing your own tomatoes or maybe some that you got from a farmer's market or a local Amish or Mennonite community, which is what I've actually done in the past. These are my own tomatoes, but I've, I've gone out about, hey, you know what, it saves a lot of money. Or if you go to the grocery store and you can find a great deal on tomatoes, get you some. Um, I have no idea what variety these to particular tomatoes are. They were given to me by someone I know. Um, I normally, I actually have them out there. They're just not quite ready. I have Amish paste tomatoes and that is my favorite canning tomato. Um, they grow great in my soil and in my zone. I know some people struggle with that, but I don't. Um, but I won't be using, I think I only have like maybe one Amish tomato. Let's see, I think. Here it is, right here. That is an Amish paste tomato. Um, of course, I cut the top of it off for processing, but um, I'm waiting on the rest of them to ripen. The vines are full, but it's just not time. So anyhow, this is what I'm gonna be using, and I don't know the variety of this particular tomato, so sorry. Okay, let me bring you in, and I'll show you the process. All right, as you can see, here is my boiling water, ice water, and a bowl to put the tomatoes in. And then I have a plate to put the skins on. I am also gonna use this tool that I absolutely love. I just recently got one, but you can also use any type of slotted spoon. Uh, but this is my new favorite thing. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tomatoes and I'm gonna just dump them into the hot water. And I'm gonna let these, um, sit in here for a minute or two, maybe more kind of closer to two minutes. The idea is not to cook your tomatoes, okay, you guys? This is about getting the skins of the tomatoes loosened up off the tomato. You're blanching these, and you will see here in a minute or so how that the skins will literally just peel off like it's no problem. And you'll see it in the hot water, but what I need to do is I need to get it iced down. So I'm just gonna wait on this and I will show you this process. Well, gosh, I, I thought this would take just a little longer, but it's not, it's, I'm already starting to see it. Um, see how the skin right there is starting to peel away? It's really hot, but that's what you wanna see so you're going to dump it in the ice water and that's going to help get the skins off just a little bit easier and then it's not so hot um, i'm going to go ahead and show this one just as an example so all i'm going to do is take the skins off and then i'm going to throw them into here just so that way i have it ready for processing and then that's the skins real easy it's like butter getting it off let me do it one more time so here is the tomato. I'm gonna to throw it in the ice water, get it cooling down, and then you'll see the skin just comes off like butter. No problem whatsoever. If it, for any reason this is tough and you can't get the skin off, throw it back in the hot water. And I'm dropping peel in the water. I'll get that out in a second. So just like that, and then here is the skin right here of the tomato. I'm just gonna pop it over on my plate. All right, I'm gonna process the rest of these tomatoes, and when I get done, I'll bring you back. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna add the contents of my uh, seasoning packet down into my tomatoes. See, I've already chopped these up. Um, there's lots of juice down in there already, so I'm just gonna dump this in whoops into a pot now here's a tip you need a really big pot all right then i'm gonna just give it a good quick stir to make sure it's all nice and incorporated boy i'm telling you i wish there was smell -o vision this seasoning packet is so like makes it smell so good and it tastes so good but ooh, the smells mm -mm -mm. 
All right, so now I'm gonna add the vinegar. It's just basic 5% um, white vinegar. I'm gonna just give that another stir. And then I'm gonna kick the heat on. I'm gonna be bringing this up to a boil and then I'm gonna let it sit for 10 minutes boiling and then it'll be time to jar it up. So I'm just gonna wait on this and I'll bring you back when this is finished with the 10 minutes of boiling. Alrighty, so I am finished. These are hot jars. They just literally came out of my canner and I'm gonna flip them over, hot jars hot salsa. It's very important that you don't use um, jars that are cold. You could risk breaking them um, just because of that uh, fluctuation in um, temperature. So let me just double check my headspace and because uh, I always like to make sure this is a half inch headspace. Okay. So I'm gonna fill this up. I'm sorry about the noise. The camera is literally next to the pot. Let me turn it off for a second. All right, so all I'm gonna do is I'm going to fill my jars up to that half inch headspace, which is about right here, but I always, always, always debubble, and I always, always, always measure. Very important to get this right. I want success with this. I don't want anything to go wrong. So very important. Basically all I do, I'll just do one jar and I'll give you an idea. Let me put this towards the back. Okay, first thing I do, I just kind of gently make sure all of the air bubbles are out and they are, you never wanna just like, I'll do this one, never wanna just like, like add air. Don't ever try to pump air, just like really go in gently and uh, you'll get all the air out. I'm gonna flip it over and then uh, just check. And I am actually right there. Sorry if you can't see, let me do it again. So I am gonna put it on that half inch Let's see, to like make sure I got that right. There we go, and as you can see, I'm sitting right on top of it. All right, I'm gonna fill the rest of these jars up and I'm gonna process them for 40 minutes, which is, let me make sure I said that right. And always, 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 always double check, triple check. Yep, 40 minutes. And uh, I'll bring you back when they're all finished. All right, 40 minutes is up. I'm gonna turn this off. And uh, pull this out. Set that over here. And uh, just check out this salsa. So I hope that this inspires you to get out and can if you have never tried it. It's a great way to put food up that came from your garden or a good sale at the grocery store or even just trying a recipe online. I mean, that's even more fun. I also forgot to mention the National Center for Home uh, Preservation and Canning website for free recipes. So go check them out as well. You can go to your local library and get free recipes, or you can do just like I did and pick up a prepackaged um, seasoning pack that's designed for canning. And um, quite frankly, this, oh, you heard the pop. This is so worth it. All right, you guys, if you like this video, pop, pop, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike. Either way is fine with me. Um, let me know if you've tried this type of a recipe before. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Make sure you give somebody a hug. We'll see you next time. Bye.